Good evening to everyone. I would like to thank Oncology Club Initiative for the opportunity for me to be with you today. Image registration and fusion exist in almost every treatment planning system today. And in addition, there are commercially dedicated softwares available like the Mirada and Velocity for the purpose of segmentation and deformable image registration to assist the radiation oncologist in target delineation and as well as normal tissue delineation. The challenge is that the commercial validation of these commercial registration software is often a complicated and leading to a black box approach. Hence, I intend to deliver an overview of image registration and fusion concept from the simple rigid registration to the complex deformable image registration processes used in radiation therapy. AAPM task group 132 has summarized the process of image registration and its limitations, and I acknowledge the following authors. I intend to answer the following questions during my lecture. Why do we need more than one imaging modality for target delineation in the era of precision radiation therapy? Also explain the concept of image registration and fusion. Various algorithms used for the purpose of image registration and we always require qualitative and quantitative tools to assess the accuracy of these registrations. Further, also would like to discuss the uncertainties and limitations with these image registration processes where it can work in a given situation. Look at this. The tumor is not visualized in this CT. A different image sequence of T1 weighted gadolinium contrast, you could see something. But at the same time, another image sequence of the same modality, flare, gives a different perception of the tumor here. And this helps to refine the human perception for delineating the target volume, which is CTV for the brain tumor in this case. So, Various modalities shows different details of information, which helps to refine the human perception for delineating this target volume, and it could produce a more consistent target definition. Further, image fusion is all about the process of how to map all these detailed informations onto one imaging modality, which is the CT, as a primary modality we use for the purpose of planning and delivery. So we prefer to use multimodality to obtain more information. Here, CT offers electron density and provide high spatial anatomical information. And MRI provides soft tissue contrast with anatomical as well as functional details from the MR spectroscopy for the MR diffusion imaging, perfusion, diffusion tensor imaging has recently contributed a new dimension in target definition and helped in dose painting in radiation therapy. Coming to the nuclear medicine aspect, the radioisotope tagged with tracers to provide physiological function information used for image derived from SPECT and PET units. Now PET with FDG images or fused with CT images on routine to provide biological information for treatment planning system. So each of these modalities have their own advantages and provide some complementary information for target delineation over space and time. Coming to the definition of registration, image registration is the process to find the best alignment to map or transform the points in one image data set to the same point in the image of the other data set. Many approaches have been implemented for image registration based on either the geometrical features like the anatomical points or surface or the intensity similarity matrices, which uses the cross-correlation squared intensity differences are the most commonly used 
mutual information for image registration. Look at this image. Like if you have this image and to be registered with another one, you many times you tend to overlay, give a rotation, and then finally do a translation to match them. So the types of image registrations could be categorized into rigid and non-rigid. In rigid registration, all pixels move or, or rotate uniformly so that each pixel to pixel relationship remains the same before and after transformation. The other one, non-rigid registration is also known as deformable image registration. In this case, the pixel to pixel relationship completely changed or the, it could be also the voxel to voxel relationship completely change. Now look at this slide the, for rigid body transformation. The image has been imaged on a field of view of 200 millimeter. And generally, if you take a 512, 512 matrix, the pixel size is 0.4. And what is the difference between a pixel and a voxel? 0.4 pixel with a slice thickness of 0.4 will become a voxel of four millimeter elements. So these, if the field of view is has the same, there is no scaling factor. The object do not change in shape. And you need only a, degrees of freedom what is required for rigid body transformation like this is three translation and three rotation in the absence of scale. So the next registration process is the again a rigid body but it is called affine transformation. Here sometimes the image is of a demagnified view like it could have been done on a field of view of 300 which means the pixel resolution is going to be 0.6 versus here 0.4. And you need to do a scaling factor in this case. So this involves translation, rotation, scaling, and sometimes shearing also. So the most important point here is that the parallelisms of the lines, the parallelism of the straight lines is preserved. The affine transformation as I explained, can have translation, rotation, scaling, and shearing. So it can have either nine parameters in routine or maximum of 12 parameters, which is at 12 degrees of freedom used for the registration. Coming to this slide, the limitation of global rigid transformation. Look at this slide carefully. If we need to match this brain in these two images between a CT and a MRI, and you find a different transformation matrix for matching this entire scalp. Now coming to this neck region, if you have to do, you see this was used with a different neck flexion and the MRI was done with a different neck flexion. So the transformation which need to be done for the neck region is larger. So one global rigid transformation do not work out for structures which is not fused or interconnected like the head with the neck region here. So let us assume the global rigid movement of anatomy is often violated, especially other than the head and neck sites. So large volumes of tissue extend outside to the body, like a breast mount on the chest. When you raise your arms up to the armrest or on your head, head support or to the sides, you find there is a huge variation. And organ filling and uncontrolled physiological motion confound the use of single affine transformation to register two image studies. So in this entire thing, the assumption of physiological motion is we assume it is to be controlled or absent. Local rigid transformation, the limitation of global rigid transformation to some extent could be mitigated by using local rigid transformation. The solution is to use rigid offline transformation to sub-register the two imaging studies. For example, the prostate itself might be considered rigid, but it moves relative to the pelvis depending upon the filling of the bladder and rectum. Here, look at this case of a prostate where the markers are in place and the left side is a curved tabletop versus the right hand side is a flat tabletop. 
by considering only a limited field of view that includes the region of the prostate or prostate surrogate i.e the markers it is often possible to use an affine transformation to accurately register the prostate anatomy in these two studies in the middle one when you need to match the entire spinal cord a piece wise cropping could be used to find the transformation and apply a mean one sometimes we need to identify a anatomical structure like in the case of a liver sbrt to do a matching algorithm so why do we require deformable registration patient positioning as i explained will change the tissue and breathing motion patient weight loss during the course of treatment sometimes tumor may shrink or grow and organ filling will not be consistent on different occasions for all these reasons there could be always the image reference and the field image could be deformed so look at this image the planning ct after two weeks of treatment you could see the tumor has been regressed and the parotid have been little changed in shape so in order to accurately match these kind of things we would prefer to use a deformable image registration so deformable image registration term is the due to the change in shape look this image and this image is in a different shape plus it could have motions like breathing motions uh, and etc so when we try to register to these two images remember these parallelism of the straight lines are not resolved this is an important point which is different in the deformable registration as like an in the case of rigid registration the parallelism of the lines are maintained so now coming to this one how deformable registration works i would like to explain in this example look at this image a which is a field image and image b is the moving one and we need to match this with reference to this when you try this with a rigid registration the four corners will never be able to have a good match so we apply a deformable image registration here which finds out all these points how it have to match and deform this field image to the reference image and apply these 2d vector fields and you could see in this magnified image the size the blue arrow represent the vector deformable vector field the size and direction of the arrows represent the magnitude and direction of the vector field you could see here the directions are pushing these corners inside and the magnitude and shows the magnitude and the arrow shows the direction so when you apply this kind of a dvf fields on these corners more compared to the other peripheries you could deform the feel this image moving image to d like this and now this is similar to that of the reference image so now coming to image registration and data fusion the first and main component of the image registration and fusion is that the transformation matrix itself which can range from a single global linear transformation of 6 degrees of freedom to the affine transformation which is maximum of 12 degrees of freedom to completely a deformable model which could have degrees of freedom as much as 3 times the number of walks up so the second component is the matrix used to and this shows how well the images are or not registered the third component is the optimizer used as a optimization scheme used to bring the imaging data into the alignment it is worth mentioning that these general components the transformation model which defines the degrees of freedom or the parameter 
the metric or the cost function used to measure the worth of the registration and the optimization engine used to reach the final solution are completely analogous to the components required in the inverse planning of IMRT, which we do. Now, coming to the registration metrics, the most registration approaches today use can be classified either as a geometry based or intensity based one. Geometry based matrices use the external features extracted from <coughs> image data, such as anatomical or artificial landmarks and organ boundaries, or the intensity based matrices uses the voxel intensity directly. Geometrical based matrices, like the point matrices, involve use of points matching or the surfaces, and we could identify two eye points on the eye or one at the posterior point to match. And this could be internal landmarks or internal markers or fiducial markers. And this could work for single or multimodality image registration. Geometric based matrices, the other one is the surface matching. Here, they try to compute the degree of mismatch of the surface extracted, either it could be the brain or the skull bone or the pelvic bone, by the sum of the squared differences between the two data sets. So when you find the sum of the squared differences and try to see and see it is minimized, you find a reasonable match. And this could also be used for a single same imaging modality or multiple imaging modality. Coming to the intensity-based matrices. Initially, let us consider for a monomodality like a CT to CT modality. Both are CT data. And here, you try to see the sum of the squared differences here, which generally should be zero for a good match. The same thing, if we use a multimodality, one CT and MRI, the differences doesn't seem to be meaningful. So this could not make much sense. Uh, again, in this case, people also try to use the normalized correlation coefficient because the intensity signals between a CT and MR would be different. So they try to normalize the normalized coefficient and this try to improve the image registration for a small field of view, not for the entire imaging image. So coming to the most important one which is used in the intensity-based matrices or the mutual information. Using an information theory based on the approach of relative mutual information between the reference and the data set, it looks and it does a relatively good match for brain tumors. And often by default, we use this seamlessly knowing it, it does a very good registration within, within millimeters. One such matrix which has been proven very effective for registration is that mutual information matrix clinically used widely. Again, looking into the mutual information between these two things, if the mutual information matrix is high, like 0.9, it seems to be a good match. And when these mutual matrices is 0.6, they seems to be an inferior match. Now coming to the transformation model. Transformation model for a rigid, you get six degrees, as I said previously. For affine, you can have a maximum of 12 degrees of freedom, three translation, three rotation, three scaling, and maybe sometimes when you appear the sharing, another three degrees of freedom. When you come to deformable image registration, <coughs> which is a pre preform, which happens at a local level, not at a global, it happens local, local voxel-based deformation. It can have the maximum of three times the number of voxels. Again, there are different algorithms used like the global spine methods, which does, and local spine methods for, or uh, viscous fluid methods and various deformable image registration algorithms have been studied in detail. Coming to the next one is the qualitative imaging tools used to check the quality of the image registration. 
So often we use a linked display linked cursor where you drag a cursor on a CT, it drags to a similar point on an MRI, and many times it's very useful. The other one is the split screen or checker box or a spy glass, which helps you to look on a small field of view or a small point when you're moving inside, what is the adjacent CT versus the MRI to see how it is matching. Spy glass works pretty well to see a match between uh, reference and field during image guidance and etc. The other one also is a color wash overlay to give it and you can have the color wash overlay to see CT or MRI, how they are overlaid with each other to see whether there's a good match, especially the outer border of the segmentations, etc. Edge detection. Along with the, <coughs> these qualitative tools have been categorized in the AAPM 131 site specific, like what kind of a tools are relatively good for what kind of a sites have been listed very detailed. Now, Along with the qualitative, we also need quantitative matrices for the purpose. And there are various quantitative matrices like target registration error. So these two points, you can find that how these errors could be calculated. And it, these registration give you a maximum voxel dimensions of two to three millimeters. The other one is the mean distance to agreement mean distance to agreement between these two contours, you can measure these distance and see these agreements quite well. The most common popular one is the dice similarity coefficient. It gives the overlap of the two contours by finding the intersection of A versus B versus divided by the absolute numbers of A plus B. And this, the coefficients are generally point 8 to 0.9 is assumed to be a reasonable, good registration. The A little similar to DSC is the Jacobian determinant. Here, the advantage is that you find the intersection by, by the union component of A and B. No negative values are there, deriving from one as expected for clinical scenario and one for structure expected to expand zero for structure expected to decrease in volumes. So the dice coefficient matrix is a sophisticated tool which measures the similarity between these two data sets. The indices has become arguably the most broad used tool in validation of image registration. Using this dice metric scale, you could see an image of a CT and MRI, a liver which has been overlapped is being displayed in the coronal image and sagittal. Before deformable image registration, the DSC values were very less. And after deformable image registration, the DSC values becomes acceptable like 0.9 in this case. And if you take a Jacobian one, you could also see that the regression shows that it is zero negative expansion. So, the recommendation of the AAPM task group 132 is that deformable image algorithm, you find out first because each commercial planning system has its own concept and theory. So first find out how it works, accept and commission the software carefully. Deformable image registration is not always better than rigid. More degrees of freedom, potentially more error and we always need to do an end-to-end test in clinical situation is very important before implementing in clinical practice. Why deformable reg registration is challenging? Because algorithms typically do not rely on fundamental physics related to the human anatomy or physiology. So I, I would like to conclude that the need of registration is obvious and requirement in radiation therapy for most of our processes from treatment preparation, target delineation, and also used in the entire chain of treatment delivery and verification, as well as tumor response monitoring. The processes could be from a simple global transformation to a local solution of a deformable registration to a complex transformation involving voxel to voxel deformation. What are the challenges? Validation methodologies for non-rigid registration algorithms. We need more robust similarity measures. 
we need to also distinguish where we need to do a rigid and where we need to apply deformable registration. Also, there is a need for novel display techniques for evaluating the deformable registration. Thank you.